doing pretty good. There's a little bit of pull up, but I've printed in nylon before and I would not get nearly this good of a result. That's for sure. So I have a problem. That doesn't help. I'm trying I'm trying to solve a specific problem. I've tried printing a nylon before, but I just haven't had much luck. I can get my printer to print nylon, I just can't get my parts to stay flat, which can be a pretty tricky thing to do when you're printing nylon. And I have a Prusa MK3J K. I have an MK3i CSI Miami. I don't even know which printer I have. I have an MKI3S. That name's harder than it looks. I've seen different videos on YouTube um, for printing nylon, but I haven't seen any specifically for the Prusa. And specifically what I wanted to know is kind of more about like the conversion. Um, so on a Prusa, obviously you have the magnetic bed, but when I print large prints in nylon, there's enough force during when the part cools that it'll actually pull in and cut the metal bed. Like not even like just fold it in half, like like a full 360 cup it'll just come like come up like that but nylon specifically the cte like that coefficient thermal expansion is just nasty and it just pulls in that plate um the parts just aren't that i can do super small parts but i can't do large parts um so like parts over maybe about two inches in length that happens to them or you start to see it at least I, so i have a fairly okay recipe in terms of print parameters right now it's just kind of a build plate stiffness issue so that's kind of what i want to take care of in the next couple days. I've seen build plates made out of glass and garolite. Um, and I've used printers that have glass beds and they're pretty nice. But here's the thing. Um, I have a kid and she likes to get into things and glass and kids don't mix. So I'm probably going to lean towards garolite. So yeah, I'm going to just hop on my computer and order some garolite and we'll see where we're at after that. Okay, so we're here at McMaster. I need to get a piece of garolite and I need to get some clips. I was looking at these sheets over here. I think I'm gonna start out with an eighth of an inch, and then if I need thicker, I'll probably just go to 3 16 after that. Um, but obviously I want the bed to be as thin as possible so the heat from the bed heater can come up through it a little bit easier. Um, in yellow, we'll add, and we'll get some clips. Yeah, binder clips. I was thinking about getting these at a, for 5 16 thickness, and we'll just get a pack of those, and we'll add to order. Cool, and then we'll just get these and then it should come in in the next couple days. The Garolite has landed. Hmm, packaging. And there is our Garolite. And there's our clips. Yeah, that should work pretty good. There's a couple scratches on the front side, but we'll just put that on the bottom. That should work fine. And then if anything else, if I need to use the other side, um, I can just sand off those scratches or just order another piece of Garolite. So this stuff's pretty cheap. You can get it from a bunch of different places. I just got it from McMaster. Guys, I am the hugest McMaster fanboy. Just love it. I, I would buy my food there if they sold food. Actually, they do sell food, but it's like snacks and stuff. It's not like real food. But McMaster, man, I just love McMaster. But I mean, you can get it a bunch of different places. You can get it on like Amazon or eBay or wherever you want to get it. But I just like McMaster. That's what's nice about McMaster is just like, they're pretty consistent. And I gotta get this sticker off. So I'm just gonna let it soak in some alcohol. I'm trying not to scratch the surface so that surface will be, you know, relatively nice and not all messed up. <laughs> I think I'm doing an okay job. <laughs> the other thing I could have done is just like cut off that piece because this is bigger than I need. Duh, should have done that. And we're just going to do this the most sophisticated way I know how and just trace the old bed. I'm going to try to pick the least jacked up region I can find. Yeah, we'll see how well I can uh, follow my lines. Sometimes you have an on day, sometimes you have an off day. And i rock off days all the time okay that looks pretty good so i'll just take that and then i'll just cut it out of the garolite and then we'll slap it on the bed so you hear what you're thinking you're thinking how are you going to cut this it's garolite probably just dremel and a cutoff wheel because i am lazy and important safety note whenever you're cutting fiberglass be sure to wear a respirator because the fiberglass will jack you up and because i typically try to avoid breathing in abrasive particles life pro tip also, I try not to typically cut fiberglass indoors, but my wife's not here, so I'm just gonna do whatever I want. Don't tell my wife. Cool. I think we did that with uh, minimal cancer. I did the old Dremel and vacuum trick. Um, that's a pretty good one. One of my favorites, actually. 
Okay, so we're gonna slap this in the printer. So yeah, I have a Prusa printer it's inside of a Boxelmo enclosure with ventilation and temperature regulation. So it's been a pretty good setup. Um, so I'm just gonna put this on the bed. And what we need to do is we need to recalibrate the Z offset. Cause obviously this is thicker than the spring steel sheet. Okay, okay, okay. New plan. So what I've been doing is putting on the build plate so that the um, Pinda probe could read the plate so it could find an offset. And then once it found the offset, I would remove the plate like that. And then that way it could print on the bed, which works. I can get it to print on this bed. So I can get it to print on Garolite, which is cool. The part that I don't like is I have to change my Z offset because it touches off on the bed, but then it goes lower because I removed the bed. So, and I also have to take off the bed before it starts printing, but after it does a calibration. And I've kind of seen that on some other videos. It's kind of like a hack way to do it, I guess, you know, like other people will do it g-code like they'll change their g-code so that there will be like delay and that delay will allow them to change the bed or do whatever they need to do or put on clips but i had an idea part way through as i was kind of doing this what i think i might do is order some steel and sandwich this piece of garolite in steel and what that will do is the piece of steel that i attach to the bottom will make use of the magnetic bed that way i don't have to use these clips because the clips are kind of annoying the garolite will be in the middle so i'll have the stiffness of the garolite and I'll just epoxy the steel on, on top. And that way the Pinda probe has something to touch off of. And that way I don't have to use clips. I don't have to modify G code and I hopefully won't have to modify the Z offset too much. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna hop back onto McMaster and order some steel so I can basically make, yeah, like a steel sandwich and we'll try that out. Okay, cool. So we're back on McMaster. We need to find some, some steel plate. So I'm gonna probably do low carbon steel. Let's do this one. And then uh, we need some epoxy to hold that sucker on. Probably a heat resistant epoxy. I'm just looking at temperatures. It's not high enough, 200, it could, that one would work. Let's see what, uh, what's that one stuff called? It's like JB Weld. Hey, JB Weld. I might just use JB Weld. Yeah, so let's just use JB Weld. We can pick that up at the store. Do we need anything else? I don't think we do, unless I jack this up. <laughs> Hopefully I don't. Um, cool, I think we're good. Let's, uh, I'll order that in. We got the steel. Let's unbox it. Awesome. Recap <laughs> what I'm thinking. It gets its rigidity from this guy, the Garolite. And then I'm just gonna cut two pieces of the steel and then just straight up put JV weld on this. And then we'll just use that as like a metal Garolite metal sandwich. And then that will be like the print bed surface. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, so I guess we'll cut it out and then we'll see where, we're, where we are at, at that point. Well, I'll probably trace it. Yeah, let's trace it. So I just traced out two instances of the bed and then we'll just uh, cut those bad boys out. And then uh, we're just gonna use our trusty little tin snippies. Okay, got them cut out. And man, that is the forearm workout of the year. Some of the edges are kind of janky, so I'm just gonna take a hammer and just kind of flatten them out on the vise. Yeah, so I'm just trying to smooth out those peaks. See how it's way peaked right there? So just trying to smooth that out with the hammer. That doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but we're just gonna try to get the majority of them out. Okay, those are all looking pretty straight. So what I'm gonna do is sand the edges because these edges are lit. <laughs> They're very sharp. So I'm gonna sand down the edges, knock down the burrs, and then I'm gonna sand the faces to give them a little bit of texture. Then I'm gonna epoxy them with JB Weld to the Garolite. Okay, so I'm gonna sandwich these together with the epoxy. But I'm just gonna lay down some uh, saran wrap so I don't epoxy the plate to my table. So that'll be the next step.
Okay. And now we need to put a bunch of weight on it. So the print bed is completed, the epoxy is done drying. I've tried it out a little bit, it seems to be doing pretty good. A um, couple things I've noticed is that it's super heavy, noticeably heavier than a traditional Prusa build plate. Another thing I've noticed is it's really hard to remove from the Prusa heated bed, um, mostly just because all the magnets are engaged at the same time. Because on the flexible one, you only are trying to separate it from like a, a couple magnets at a time. But because this bed is rigid, you're trying to disengage them from all the magnets all at the same time. So it's actually pretty difficult to take this off. What I think I might do is just take some aluminum foil and fold it up on itself a bunch of times and, and use that as a spacer. Maybe in the future, I'll get a spacer like a high temperature plastic or a, an aluminum spacer to hold it away from the magnet so it's a little bit easier to get on and off. Also in terms of the weight, so a normal Prusa printer bed is about 284 grams. And so if you put on the, <laughs> the modified heavy Chango plate, it's about 1,194 grams. So it is definitely way heavier. It's heavy enough that I'll definitely slow down the accelerations inside the slicer, inside Kira. Um, mostly to prevent like the steppers from skipping steps as it slows down and, and changes direction with this build plate, which is fine because I print nylon slower anyway. And so I don't think that should have too much of an effect on print time and different things like that. So the other reason I want to decelerate is to just kind of save on wear on the belt and pulleys and different things like that. So that's another reason I'll reduce the acceleration a little bit. Um, but other than that, I think it's pretty much ready to go and we'll throw it in the printer and try some prints. Yeah, so I put the build plate inside the printer and it took a little while to get it calibrated. The first couple of prints were a little high and it kind of extruded filament back on itself. So I stopped the print and cleaned off the nozzle and, and just tried again. And after a couple of times, I got it pretty much dialed in. And one thing for sure, that new build plate takes way longer to heat up, just has way more thermal mass than the old build plate does. And so the first couple of prints, I think I ran it at like 90 or 95 C and um, it was warming up and it was just taking forever. I didn't even let it get up to temperature. I just stopped the print and then I went back and I resliced that model at 70 or 60 degrees Celsius. And that worked a lot better. Just so I didn't have to wait as long. Yeah, I don't even know if it would have gotten up to 95. It might have been just too much kind of thermal load to be able to heat it up. And along with that, it also holds heat a lot better. So um, on the cool down, because um, I'll typically let my parts just cool down naturally on the build plate inside the enclosure. Yeah, and it definitely takes a lot longer for it to cool down back to room temperature. It probably takes 25, 35 minutes or more for it to come back down to room temperature from 60 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of an interesting note. Yeah, and a big thing with this is just bed adhesion. I tried just a normal plain surface with glue stick and I did that like a bunch of times. I don't know how many prints I did. On my slicer software, I have at least 35 iterations of parameters, and some of those I did doubles of. So, I mean, it was, I think I at least put over like maybe 45, 55 prints on the build plate just to try to get it tuned in. And I think over that process, the build plate just got stickier and stickier and stickier. Like the parts just stuck to the build plate better and better and better every time. So I do think that there's an element of like the build plate, that surface kind of needs to be seasoned. Like you just need to use it a little bit in order for it to like kind of build up its tackiness or, you know, for like the impurities and different contaminants on the surface of it to be clean by virtue of you using it, right? That every time you remove a print or a print fails, it takes with it a little bit more of like the oil or grease or dirt or whatever's on the surface of that build plate and just makes it a little bit cleaner. So now the build plate, it works really well and the prints adhere to it really well too. Partway through, I wanted the prints to stick to the build plate better. So I did take it off and I sanded like a crisscross pattern into it with sandpaper. And then I cleaned it really well with acetone. And I think that helped a lot. And then I put a bunch of glue stick on it. I still was having bed adhesion problems, but again, those went away over time and it just got better and better and better. So sanding cross thatches and using extra glue stick wasn't a silver bullet, but I definitely think it did help it just took a little bit more time to be able to put enough prints on the print bed so that it got cleaned off by all the prints. Cool, and that's pretty much about it for the saga of the super heavy build plate. 
It's something I definitely plan to keep on using. It works awesome with nylon and I'll probably use it with some other plastics. Sometimes they get some warping when I print large parts in ABS. So this might be able to help those stick down. One thing that helped a lot is in CAD, I actually created like a small little square, like a short square. And then in my slicer, I positioned those little squares inside my part, basically like a small little integrated raft, basically. Because what I was doing before is I was adding a brim, but the part would come off and the brim would still be kind of holding it down, but the part had come off. And so I just needed a little bit bigger footprint of an area to kind of keep the part down. So that's what that little square does. And it's only about maybe like a six of an inch thick and then so what I do is I kind of print that and then yeah in my slicer I literally just put that so it's intersecting the model it's inside the model and then afterwards I can come back and it's just a sixteenth of an inch thick and I just come back and trim it off with a utility knife and that actually worked pretty good. The other thing that I did is I actually designed these kind of flying buttress type supports. So in addition to the support that the slicer generates, I have these flying buttress things that I also just like put into the model inside the slicer. So it just gets printed into it, but that adds extra rigidity as that part gets built really high. But yeah, definitely a cool quick project if you want some super flat prints. I'll leave some links and some information in the video description so if you want you can get the materials and build one yourself and if you found this video helpful and you want to see some more like it consider subscribing my videos can only get better from here anyways cool thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one